Hi, uh, this is Masumi Yamada from DPRI Kyoto University. Uh, I'd like to talk about ground motions and earthquake early warning for the 2016th Kumamoto earthquake. Uh, this earthquake is actually a sequence of two earthquakes. First earthquake occurred on April 14th, uh, 9 p.m. in Japan Standard Time. A moment magni magnitude was 6.2, and nine people died. A maximum JMA seismic intensity was recorded at 7 in Mashiki Town, uh, which is corresponding to 11 to 12 in modified Mercury intensity scale. The second large earthquake occurred April 16th, and the moment magnitude was 7. 41 people died, uh, not only due to the collapse of housing, but also landslide and change of health conditions after the earthquake. And the maximum JMA seismic intensity was 7 in Mashiki Town and Nishihara Village. The 7 is the largest seismic intensi intensity scale in JMA intensity scale. Here are uh, the figures show the ground motion distribution for two earthquakes. You can see the red color, uh, which indicates the seismic intensity scale 7. It's only right here in Mashiki Town for the first earthquake, but the second earthquake, this uh, region with strong motion, is much, much wider than the first event, and the distribution is from northeast to southwest in this direction. And the second earthquake, the intensity 7 was recorded in Mashiki Town, which is right here, and also Nishihara Village, which is right here. And this figure shows aftershock distribution with roughly corresponding to the fault rupture geometry. The left figure shows the uh, aftershock distribution before the second event. And right figure shows uh, aftershock distribution after the second event. For the first earthquake, the rupture is right next to the Kumamoto Basin, which is shows in this uh, green region. And the rupture fault rupture is along this Hinaku fault. The fault length is 20, estimated 20 to 30 kilometers for the first earthquake. Uh, for the second earthquake, aftershock distribution is much more complicated, and but the main rupture is uh, considered in the along this Futagawa Fort in this uh, here uh, about 30 to 40 kilometers around here. However, there are uh, induced earthquakes in this uh, Oitabebu region and also uh, the boundary between Kumamoto and uh, Oita prefectures right here. So this aftershock distribution is much more complicated for the Kumamoto earthquake. So this blue square it shows the uh, location of Mashiki Town which is recording the seismic intensity scale 7. For both earthquakes, uh, the Mashiki Town was rotating right on above the fault line. So let's focus on the strong motion in this Mashiki Town. There are several strong motion data recording in this in this town, and this figure shows the location of three major uh, seismic recording in this uh, center of this town. At the north, right here, this is a station of KickNet uh, provided by NIED. And the middle, this is a location of the Mashiki Town, Town Hall. And at the south, this is a temple seismic station installed by Professor Hata in Osaka University. And you can see the number is the size JMA seismic intensity. And the distance between stations is about 500 meters. So this small region, uh, seismic intensity is quite different. At the north, it's uh, uh, 6.5, but to the south, it gets bigger and bigger. And uh, the seismic intensity was 6.9 at the south. 
And here are the velocity waveforms recorded at these stations uh, in EW component, it's at the largest component. At the KickNet station, the maximum velocity was 130 cm per second, and town hall, town hall and severely damaged region at the south, the maximum velocity was 180 cm per second, which is very large velocity waveforms. And the shape of waveform is quite different. Comparing the town hall and severely damaged region, you can see more multiple pulses for this severely damaged region. On the other hand, and the town hall, they have just single big pulse in these records, which probably uh, these uh, pulses are amplified by the subsurface soil structure in this severely damaged area. And this figure shows the uh, distribution of collapsed housing in this Masiki town, identified by aerial photos. And you can see the distribution is also quite different to the to the from north to south. Sorry, at the north around this Kikune station, there are almost no collapsed housing, but in the middle there are moderate damage around this Masiki town hall. And to the south, to the, this region, there are so many collapsed housing. The roughly the percentage of collapsed housing is eighty per more than eighty percent in this small region right here. And this is an example of a photo of collapsed housing in that area. And this house was built in two thousand two, which is not so old. And you can see the condition material is good for this house, but uh, there are significant damage in the connection between the column and beams here. So that uh, makes this uh, house totally collapsed. And also you can see the severe damage in the foundation of the house, which probably due to the deformation of sur surface soil condition, sur subsurface soil. Uh, we think uh, the soil condition at this uh, severely damaged region is not so good. Um, uh, Japan Meteorological Agency, JMA, providing uh, the earthquake early warning for these earthquakes. And this figure shows an example of the second event on April 16th. Uh, five seconds after the earthquake, the closest station detected the P wave. And nine seconds after the earthquake, first earthquake early warning was provided, and the magnitude was estimated as 5.9 in JMA magnitude scale. And 30 seconds later, uh, the early warning was updated, and second warning was provided, and the magnitude was estimated at 6.9. The final magnitude for this second earthquake was 70.3 in JMS scale. So the estimation magnitude was reasonably good and the location is very accurate. The error was less than 10 km. So for this earthquake early warning was uh, provided properly, but 9 seconds was not early quick enough for inland earthquake. So you can see that a uh, uh, quite wide blind zone which has no early warning before the strong motion arrival. Uh, the radius is about 25 kilometers in this region. Uh, this is property of earthquake early warning. It's very difficult for inland earthquake. And also Kumamoto earthquake starts from very small shaking at the beginning and it grows and larger and larger. So for this type of earthquake, earthquake early warning was uh, very difficult to provide uh, quickly. And this figure shows the uh, estimation of ground motions for earthquake early warning. And left figure shows observed seismic intensity. And right figure shows uh, the back in the background color. This is estimated ground shaking. You can see the distribution of this red colored region is agreed 
reasonably well for this observation and also estimation right here. However, there are a couple of uh, stations which is actually underestimating the observed seismic intensity in this region. Because a current earthquake early warning, the ground motion was estimated from the distance from the epicenter, which is right here. So for these regions, the distance from the epicenter is a little bit far. However, as I showed before, the rupture is going to this direction. So the, this station, the full distance is very small. So that is why uh, this, these stations uh, in around this area, the ground shaking was underestimated the observed seismic intensity. But overall, the estimation of ground motion was reasonably good for earthquake early warning for the Kumamoto earthquake. Here are conclusions of this slide. We had uh, two large earthquakes, only 28 hours apart. One first one was moment magnitude 6.2, the second one was 7, which is larger than the first one. And we had uh, extremely large recordings uh, near the source. Uh, the maximum velocity was about 2 meter per second. And we had uh, heavy structural damage in Maski town. In some small regions, uh, more than 80% of wooden houses were collapsed, totally collapsed. And finally, JMS, uh, Japan Meteorological Agency uh, provided earthquake early warning for this earthquake. Uh, but they have quite a wide blind zone, about 25 kilometers, no warning before the strong motion arrival. But in general, the estimation of ground shaking it was reasonably good for these earthquakes. We thank JMA and NID for providing the strong motion records, and thank you very much for your attention.